Hey everybody, this is the Outbound Ghost, the adventure game I'm working on, and this is the first devlog for it. To start off, I thought I'd recount everything that's been happening so far throughout the development of the game, and there's no real better way to start that through explaining how it first started. So in the summer of 2020, I was developing my game, Lootbox Life, which is the first commercial game that I ever made. And I just wanted a little break, so I made this little prototype. And so this prototype was kind of like an RPG game inspired by Link's Awakening, so the legend is not the Link's Awakening, trade quest. So if you don't know, in that game, there's this little side quest that you can do that you get an item and then you go to an NPC and then you give them that item and then you get another one for in return that might help uh, another character. And then when you give that character that item, they give you another one and so on. And so the whole idea with this project was that you would start with one item and then you would build yourself up to helping everybody in this one town and I wouldn't make it ghost-based because I liked that aesthetic and Halloween was coming up and I thought, you know, um, maybe I can make this a small HIO uh, Halloween release. So as you saw uh, in the beginning, that did not end up happening. The game has very much uh, increased in scope since then. And so basically what happened is I played Octopath Traveler and I thought, you know, I really, really like this aesthetic. So I'm going to go with making this game a 3D game with a pixel art aesthetic instead of making it strictly pixel art. And so the game design was still the same, but aesthetic was very much different. As you can see here, same sprites and everything, it's just in the 3D world, and it's a bit janky because I hadn't been used to making too many 3D games. But I think the general aesthetic was kept and it looked a bit cool, you know? And so I, I was showing this off as I was developing it, and this was after Lootbox Life had been released. And people had been saying that they really liked the aesthetic and that it reminded them of Paper Mario, even though that was definitely not the inspiration. I thought, oh, maybe it's the white outlines, you know? But it, it's true, it does look like it a bit. And so I just did some tests and I actually really enjoyed how it looked like in this new style. So I basically redid all the art and it, it became more of a Paper Mario style game instead of Octopath Traveler. And that's where we get um, the art style that you might see on screen right now. It's uh, very much similar, but the characters are very much distinct. And although Paper Mario doesn't have this realistic style for the backgrounds the same way that Paper Mario does, I really wanted to keep that just because I felt like it distinguished it a bit and it felt like the ghosts were in an other world. You had this very sort of realistic background or environment and the ghosts were paper. So it not only made them stand out, it just made the whole game make it feel like the ghosts were really in a different dimension to other elements of the game. And so I kept on developing the game and the game design stayed pretty similar. But I wasn't entirely happy with how the ghost themselves had turned out, even though I liked the style. And so I ended up hiring uh, Clayzilla, which is an amazing artist and game developer as well. Check uh, their Twitter out. I'll put it in the description. Um, and they made some character portraits for all the characters in the game so far. And it turned out really, really great. You can see some of them in, in the screenshot right here, and then you'll see some of them over the video as well. But as you can see, definitely a large, large update. And I'm really glad that that ended up being the case. And so around this time, it was October of 2020, actually. So a lot of time had passed because I hadn't been working on it, um, it for a while after Lootbox Life had released and maybe through the months uh, leading up to it. But at this point, it was my main project and it was no longer something small that was just kind of in the background. So I thought that the item quest game design philosophy wasn't really making the whole scope of the project justice. So I decided to change it up a bit. The main issue was that the overall story wasn't really impactful and the whole point of the game was the story. So you just went around training these items with these ghosts, but you felt like the story beast when you uh, do these item interactions just really didn't have enough impact. And that's really a big issue. So instead of it being a bit more open worldy where you can kind of choose who you interact with and give items to whoever you want, in whichever order you want, it turned a bit more linear. It was more of an adventure game focused on narrative. It was all about exploration and light environmental puzzles. So you might have a torch and put some stuff on fire to open a door, kind of like Zelda. So it evolved into that sort of game. But there was still some non-linearity in there. And I felt like this still really hurt the story because the whole point of a story game is to make it impact. And if players can approach it from any direction they want, that really hurts the ability as a narrative designer to craft these really specific and impactful moments. So I changed it to be basically all linear, but the gameplay elements stay the same. So it was still mostly about exploring around and then coming across different story beats. And so because of this lack of gameplay and there wasn't as much exploration as before because the game was linear, the pacing was sort of off. You just felt like you went around, you encountered these story moments, then you went to the next one. And so it felt a bit stunted and too linear and there was nothing in between the story beats to uh, make the pacing less stunted, right? As well, the cutscenes also felt like they broke the exploration a bit. So you would explore a bit, find a new story beat, experience a cutscene, and then do the same again. And because the cutscenes were set up in such a way where you had to load into a different area to experience them, so maybe you would go uh, next to a ghost, talk to them, and if that activated a cutscene, it would have a loading screen. You would have this sort of special cutscene mode where it wasn't quite the same way you interact with the world as when you were in the gameplay mode. And so just all that together felt like it really didn't mesh the whole game together and it felt like there were these separate parts put together and it was all just very stunted. And so because of that, when I was redesigning the game a bit, 
I decided, okay, the cutscene system is something that really has to change. It has to be more like these old school RPGs where cutscenes aren't in a different world. You just walk into a town and then suddenly some guy comes up to you and says something, right? So it's all in the same world. A dialogue interaction with some NPC is basically the same system as a cutscene. And I felt like that really made the world feel more cohesive and the pacing was less stunted. And so that actually really, really helped because you can just get through the story beats much more quickly and it just helped the pacing a ton. But it didn't really help for the fact that the gameplay was still not very interesting and it was quite necessary to break up the pacing of this game as well. So one aspect of the pacing was fixed, but we still needed to fix another. And so I thought instead of ham fisting in one game mechanic, why don't I make multiple of them and make them all related to the story? Because that would help the main purpose of the game, which is to tell the story that I really enjoy. And so that's exactly what I did. Most gameplay focused games, they have the gameplay right and then they break up the gameplay through story beats to help the pacing. And I thought, well, what if I do the opposite? So you have story beats and then those story beats are broken up with gameplay beats. And the gameplay beats are not necessarily just a generic gameplay loop. It's actually all playing into the story itself and that makes the whole experience more cohesive. And so this is exactly what ended up happening. So there's this one part near the beginning of the game where your amnesia character kind of gets memories from their past feeding into their brain and they're really not pleasant memories. And so the way to do this instead of just showing it through a cutscene, I thought was having a specific gameplay moment dedicated to this aspect of the game. And so you can see right here on the screen, the little balls are basically the memories of the character is trying to dodge and that's how I represent the moment. And so the there is still interactivity, but it's all tailored to the story and this might increase workload at a certain point but I think if I pick and choose my battles as to what to make more gameplay focused, it, it will be fine. And in order to make the player feel more connected to the world, it's not just these story beats that have mini games designed to them, it's also uh, maybe some certain repetitive action. So if there's a door that's locked, you might, instead of just like, oh, I have this key, I can open it now. There's a lock picking mini game that as you can see right here, it's not very finished at all, but um, the gameplay concept is there and that just makes the experience more cohesive and everything feeds into itself in a sort of story sense. Another example is that there's this character that really likes playing this card game called Spades and Souls, and you can go to the tavern and play some card games with them and get some cards, and then when you're exploring, you find some cards that might help you in playing the card game, and so it all plays into itself like that. And the last of these examples that I actually really enjoyed is uh, the Jira Box puzzles. And so in August of 2020, I made this small game that came out on Switch, Mobile, and Steam, and it was a puzzle game called Jira Box. And I thought it would be really cool to add this uh, rotating mechanic that I have in the game in a 3D sense. And so I did some prototyping and I thought, you know, I kind of don't want to make this a whole game in itself. So what if I just add this mini game to the app on Ghost and I make it such that you explore around, and you find some Jira Box cubes, you can complete the puzzles. And so that's exactly what ended up happening. And there are these collectible Jira Box cubes that when you find them, you can complete a Jira Box puzzle and you obtain them and those play into the interactions with some other ghosts in the game. So basically what the game has slowly evolved into is to be a story-based game with a tight gameplay integration within the story. And I think that's a very cool way of telling a story within video games. I felt that before it didn't take advantage of the medium so much just because it was kind of a movie that you can play, but now with these added elements, everything is interconnected. And that not only makes the game more fun in a gameplay sense, because now there are actually gameplay mechanics, but it makes the story better because the gameplay mechanics uplift that main part of the game. And that's basically where I am now. The design of the game is basically consolidated and now it's just about making content. So the game is in a really cool place right now. That's basically it for the development of the game. That's where it is now. And there's a lot of stuff that I missed out, such as the game actually being in the Wholesome Direct that's going to happen on the 12th of June, so that's really awesome. I'll leave some links in the description in case you want to check that out. It's going to be a really cool announcement there, so I really recommend uh, checking it out. But yeah, that's it for this uh, first devlog, and please let me know what you want to see in the future ones. What I have in mind is to show progress from like the development of specific gameplay beats, so different mini games and stuff like that, or maybe showing off different environments, certain systems, since I don't want to spoil the actual game itself, but if there's anything you want to see, let me know about that, and I uh, hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll see you in the next devlog.